Hi there, and welcome to Stamping in the Barnyard. My name is Bethany Barnard, and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. And I'm excited to share with you today a fold that I'm calling Inward Diamond Fold. I learned this fold from one of my team members, Renee Uwater, and she has a Facebook page called Renee's Paper Crafts Business. Look her up, she's also done a video on how to do this and we do it slightly different, so it might depend on your personality. I prefer to use a ruler and a stylus, I think it's a lot quicker. She uses a trimmer, so whichever one you're more comfortable with, you might want to view both, both videos if you indeed like this fold. Now, I have done a couple other cards with this and in this case, I'm using the same paper, but the reverse side for the inside of the diamond. And that doesn't always work, but I liked it in this case. But I also did one where I kept everything in the same color. And that's when I got the idea, but you have to sort of make two at a time <laughs> to be able to do like a different color on the inside, unless your reverse side works. So there's all sorts of options there for you. But what I'm gonna make today is a card like this. And it says, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. And then on the inside, your nacho average friend. It's a cute card. It's really not that hard and it comes together quickly. And I'm really excited to share that with you. So let's begin with the things that you'll need. And in this case, the way I'm going to show you how to make this, you'll need a pencil, an eraser, a stylus, which the one that comes with your Simply Scoreboard, if you have one, works great, um, and a ruler. And I particularly like a ruler that has, this has a little metal piece that goes in there that can help me just butt my stylus right up against it and get a nice straight line. Okay, so the other things you'll need, and I will have this in the descriptions, but if you're following along right now just to gather your pieces, I have some of our Baker's Twine for hanging our pinata, and I have Additionally, now you can't see this. This is a piece of acetate that measures one half inch by three and a half inches. And you will need that. Although you can just use a piece of designer series paper or cardstock, that also works. But if you don't want to see, for example, it's going across here. And if you don't really want to see that, then a piece of acetate or our window sheets is what I've used. And then for the inside of your card here, to write your greeting, you're gonna need a uh, whisper white, or sorry, basic white, which is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then if you want to do the two tones, which is what I'm gonna show here, where you have a different color in here, it does make the DSP parts for two cards, uh, but we'll only be making one today, but I did need to have two sheets that were of designer series paper that were four and a four by five and a quarter. So I have two of these and this will make more sense as we go along. And then for my side strip here that this butts into, I have the cardstock piece, which is three quarters by five and a half. And then I have the DSP that's gonna go on top, which is one half by five and a quarter. And then for your main card base, it's five and a half by eight and a half, just like every other card base or usual card base. And then we're gonna score it, which I'm gonna do right now, in the landscape at two and one eighth, which is the first notch after the two on your simply scored, and then four and a quarter, which is your usual halfway mark for scoring a card. That actually works in a lot of the folds that we do. You do want to go ahead and give a nice crisp fold. So I am using my bone folder on this. And when we do our scoring part to this, which is what we're gonna do straight away, you want your card open because if you score on the top of this, it'll actually score right through to the bottom. So you wanna open this outright and then the first thing we're gonna do is measure. And the only thing you have to remember for the card base is three quarters of an inch and for the DSP, half an inch. 
Okay, so I am gonna go, well, you know the halfway mark here. So I'm gonna come in at three quarters of an inch and on the line, I'm gonna mark with a pencil. And then down here, I could do that at four and three quarters, but I'm just gonna come three quarters in this way too and mark right there. And now I need to go halfway up this edge or the other option I have is I love the grid paper because every square of our grid paper is a quarter of an inch. So if I put this, this piece up against a straight line, then I know that I can then put my ruler, I hope this is making sense. Actually, if I move this over and do it on the bold line, that might be easier for you to understand. So I've got my edge, up against this bold line here and I'm coming in three quarters of an inch so that's one two three squares here and you want three squares up here actually but you want to put this down let's do it this way because you want to have okay so you want to have sorry I, I I, I apologize. Okay, so I'm just trying to get my ruler best for this video. It's not necessarily the way I would do it in my desk, but it's the best way to show the video. So I have put my line of my ruler right on one, two, three squares over. So I know that's three quarters of an inch. And I made sure that where my ruler extends here is the same. And I know that half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna come right here and I'm gonna mark two and three quarters. So that gives me my third point. And then likewise, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do this one horizontal. Maybe I should have done the other one horizontal. Maybe, you know, that's the difference when you're trying to make a video, you're trying to make it work for the video that you're making and not necessarily how, would, how you would normally do it on your desk by yourself. Okay, so I've done it again where I've come up three, one, two, three, yep, three, three squares of my grid paper, which is gonna put me at three and three quarters of an inch. And then I've got my ruler starting here and ending at five and a half, so I know that at two and three quarters, it's gonna be right there. So now I have my three points and they should all be three quarters of an inch in from every edge of the outside of the card. You know, I opened that up to make those marks, but really you only have to open it for doing the actual scoring. But we are ready to do that now. And it's as simple as, what I like to do is put my stylus on the dot and make sure that the ruler is up against it and I don't go until I know my ruler and my dots are both where the stylus is right up against it. And then I know I get a nice straight line. Okay, and this is where I think it's so much easier than on a trimmer. But Renee is definitely prefers the trimmer. And I know that we're all different that way. So now I do like this ruler, as I said, that has a little bit of a metal edge in it to so that you can feel that your stylus is budding right up against it so okay so here we go and then my last line here and you can see this is the diamond and that's why i'm calling it an inward because it does pop inward diamond fold and really, because of the way we do this, and you'll see this as we go along, it really does not have to be that exact. So now I have this done, and now we're gonna fold this in half. And once you have it folded in half and you've got a good grip on it, just gonna take your scissors and you're just gonna cut straight up all the way to that dot. And theoretically, that means you've done the same on this side. Then you can open it up, take your eraser, and then erase those pencil lines so they're not seen, which I don't know if they would really be noticed, but nonetheless, 
what does it take to erase them, right? So now we have that fold ready to go on our card. Now what I like to do is, while this is folded in half, is to get that fold working, I just bend these up and then I turn it over and I do it on the other side because that helps for when you're trying to get the fold, you've already kind of given it its rules. <laughs> so you want that to go in and you want this one to go in, right? And this, so once you've folded that in, to make that a nice crisp fold, you take your bone folder, which I had misplaced for a second, and you give that a nice fold. And then you've got it. Now you've got that fold that even once you fold it flat and put it in an envelope and mail it somewhere, when they open it up, it's still gonna make that increased diamond fold so easily. But now we want to do that for the DSP so we can decorate that front. So I'm going to put that aside and I'm gonna show you how to do this. I find these even easier to take care of because now what I'm gonna do, and I have to decide, do I want these, the, this side of my decoration or this side? I don't really have to decide yet, but I think I might go with these big squares. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, well, it doesn't matter right now while I think. Maybe you all have an opinion. But I'm lining these up. You want halfway points. So I'm just matching them up side to side. I folded it in four. And now, this is great, because now I have that halfway mark on both of these. So I'm just going to come in on each of those lines at... Do you remember what I said? Half an inch. And again, right on that line. And then here. Hope I'm not sticking my head in. Here. Here. And here. Now we are going to, you're going to see this later on, but we're going to do this with both the purple, well, freesia, and the polished pink when the time comes but um i'll probably this you do the exact same thing on both of them but i'm just gonna probably go through that one a little bit quicker although as i said it's so quick because you get those halfway marks by folding so we're just gonna score there just all four lines again this is where it would be helpful if I knew how to speed up my video. I just need somebody to do my editing. It took a lot just for me to learn to be able to put up a video on YouTube. Okay, and you're gonna see how much easier this is because now we're gonna fold this in half. And honestly, in some ways, you really only have to do that on the three points. Because what I do is with it folded in half, I cut this whole kite or diamond shape out. And because this already had the quarter inch less, you know, it was four by five and a quarter rather than the same size as a card front, it should go right over this, see, and make that beautiful in the, in its, because I went a half an inch instead of three quarters of an inch, it frames that really nicely. And we're gonna do something different with this, but this is where I'm gonna change the color in here. So I'm gonna redo that. Same thing, so if you missed it the first time, here's your second chance, because now I'm gonna do it with my pink DSP. My polished pink DSP, okay. In fact, I could try for the very first time. Is that dangerous to try something for the very first time on a video? Yes, but you know what? That's how I live. I'm going to do it anyway. So I am going to try only marking three places. So we're going to take it in a half inch here, which would be here. Half inch from here. Wait, how do I know where halfway is? 
Oh, because I didn't ever fold it in half again, guys. All right, you still got to do that part. <laughs> that is how I roll, guys. Always trying a new thing. Okay, so at this halfway mark that I have, now I can come in. And you really do need those folds at those points anyway, which you'll see in a minute when we make our triangles for the inside of the diamond. Okay, so I've just come in a half an inch on only three sides this time. And now I'm gonna take my ruler and my stylus. This is kind of where you rely on math. If you're gonna have a, an equidistant, you know, if you cut it while those things folded in half, then it all should measure out, right? Okay. If only my algebra teacher could see me now. All right, so while it's folded in half, so you see I never drew the lines here, but while it's folded in half, I'm just going to come in and right on the score line, cut this out. And this is where you get the DSP for your other card. So even though this might seem to take a while, you're really getting most of two cards done at once. And this is only if you wand it two-tone. I really don't need this piece, but I could put that on here as well. But what I'm going to do is go ahead, because I probably will make a card with it at some point, and use the um, inside purple. But I won't do that while we're on the phone with you. But I'm going to go ahead and erase those pencil marks. Okay, so before you put the DSP on here, before you glue that on, it's important that you find that, this is where it gets tricky because I was afraid I would lose that. Okay, Woo. here it is. This is that piece of acetate that I pointed out earlier that's three and a half by half inch. This is actually a little bit thinner um, and I just came across this scrap and I know it's gonna work for what we're trying to do. So a little bit thinner is gonna be okay as well. Um, did I mention it's not a big deal? Three quarters by two inches for this top piece that says holy guacamole. Well, we'll get to that, but it will be in the description. Okay, so now I wanna use my glue dots. And I'm just going to put, I like to put two at each end. So I'm picking up one here and then right next to it another one. And then the other side, one and then another, just to make sure it's strong enough. But we are actually going to be gluing the DSP over this, which will also help to keep it in place. So right over where you've done that cut, you're going to put your piece of acetate. And then you're going to take your DSP and we're going to adhere that. And I am a huge fan of the liquid glue. I feel like it gives you a little bit of forgiving time if you need to adjust it or move it at all. And it really, I know some people talk about, you know, you have to wait for it to then set, but really we're, we're talking less than a minute before this glue is adhering well. So now I do like to put run a bit around that diamond because that is going to be an opening, but otherwise I really just do the, um, and here I'm filling them in, but normally I just do the perimeter of a shape. Okay. So that was looking so good before. You can just line up this score right with the other score. And then I like to sort of go on the outside. I'm wondering if I just saw, I did. I see, I'm pretty sure I see a little bit of pencil mark on this freesia. Did I not erase this and nobody told me? I guess not. Okay, well, we fixed that, didn't we? Now, the next bit we're gonna do is with this, to change this pink color. And we could even change the design in there, but I think I'm gonna keep the design the same, but just switch the color. 
And the way we're gonna do that, we're really gonna end up with four different triangles. But what I do is I start by cutting right on that score line. And I work with one at a time. And I cut off about a little less than a quarter of an inch. And then while they're still in halves, I'll put it in here and see how's that going. It looks like it's still too wide because you don't want it to be exactly the same. Not by much, it's pretty close. So I'm only gonna cut a tiny bit off now and I'm gonna save this for the top piece. And this is really very, um, any kind of cutting that might be a little bit off, it's just very forgiving because you're really gonna have something over this acetate and so it's very forgiving. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up the center and I'm gonna be very thin there too. This is with it folded in half and that's how I get my two triangles. So I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna put one here. And then I just wanna make sure it's giving me, cause you don't really wanna go over any folds cause whenever you put something over a fold, it doesn't really bend right. So that's gonna work there. And then down here, you'll see I haven't ever cut this one, so it's too big. You wanna get the other side of the score marks. So again, I'm gonna come right up here. And then let's see how that is. And it looks like it's still, you can actually do it over the acetate and see, it's still cl too close to what the exact measurement is. And we're really leaving a little bit of a open space for it. You can always cut more, but you can't add it back on. But as I said, it's really super forgiving. It's kind of hard not to, not to make this work, even if you cut it smaller. That's almost good. I think, as I said, just for good measure, if I cut another little thin piece off, I think we're gonna be good. And then I am going to cut up this center. Again, just a little bit up the center one. And then we'll see how these fit. So this one's gonna go here. This one's gonna go here. And this one's going to go here. It's like, you know, you're back in grade school doing these puzzles. I still want to cut the tiniest bit off this bottom edge. It's hard to cut too much. Because even if I cut this smaller, it would still work. So don't be afraid of this. I hope you don't let this... You've seen how many times I've trimmed it and really it's still gonna be fine here. In fact, I'm liking the way it's gonna come out. So yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. So now I just have to glue all those pieces in. This has probably been the trickiest part of the whole card. I hope I haven't really had my head in under it because that's probably not good if I did. Um, but let's keep going. Okay, so one at a time. I'm gonna do that perimeter here and then stick it underneath the acetate. Remember, it does have to go underneath the acetate. There we go. And on, it's gotta be on the inside of all the different, you should have a complete triangle of scores and you want it to go inside those scores. And then in here, there we go. I think this is just such a pretty card. I have several grandchildren. I have um, 12 and I have a few more coming this year 
and so I'm always excited to have cards that are cute and colorful. Would make a great shower card too, spring card, Easter card. I, in fact, I kid you not, less than an hour ago, I got a text from my son who's driving up. It's my other grandson's birthday today. And uh, he texted me, said, do you have a card? Or do we need to stop and buy one? So I was like, do I have a card? So you can see how that's gonna go in and fold. And the rest is really so simple. So we're gonna start with these pieces here. Again, I like to switch out the color so that it matches the in diamond. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And we're gonna use a host of, um, some people might be horrified by how many dimensionals I'm gonna work use for this, but I just find it uh, works a little bit easier to help the recipient to know to tuck side of that card in. So we'll see how that goes. Here we go with those dimensionals. Here we go. Oh, there goes my pencil. And we're just gonna do, uh, we're gonna just go all the way down with dimensionals here. This is such a fun card. Thank you again, Renee. I'm pretty sure Renee got this from another demonstrator, uh, I think maybe from Germany. So I wanna give everybody credit that I can possibly give credit to. I think Renee did tell me that the other demonstrator also preferred the ruler and stylus method. But by all means, check out Renee's if you feel you'd be more comfortable using our trimmer to do your scores. Okay, and then you're gonna make this go flush right to the edge of the inside of your card. Whoops, that wasn't flush. Glad that came up again, there we go. And then you'll see that now this tucks in real easily, right? And hopefully they'll realize that when they get it in the mail. But this is where our three and a quarter by five and a quarter basic white cardstock comes in. And we are going to stamp. I love the sayings. I didn't even show you the set we're using. We're using Taco Fiesta, which has 23 different stamps in it. And it's got like five different faces you can put on the taco or the tortilla chip or the bowl or the cactus. They are so cute, love this. This is, oh, what's her name? Erica Kerwin, Erica Serwin. I'm not sure which way to pronounce her name, even though I watch her and listen to her and can't remember, but this is her million dollar set and it is so cute and I had to get it right away. But it's got like, you spice up my life. And we're gonna put inside your nacho average friend because who's a nacho average friend, right? We're all unique. <laughs> And holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Those are the two we're gonna use, but there's also Spectacular and Long Time No Taco. I love it, it's a cute, cute set. Thank you, Erica. All right, so we're gonna put inside here your Nacho Average Friend. And I'm just using the Memento Black Ink, which is also what I use, the ink that I use to stamp all of the images so that I could use my blends to color them in. And so I'm gonna put this down, you're not your average friend, which I've seen like people, you know, putting in a, um, attaching them to a bag of nacho cheese Doritos or something, so many cute ideas. Okay, and then I want to take my stamp that has the nachos and I like to, cause you know, we love to do sort of the inside page too as well, right? So there's my nachos. And I am now going to color these in. And I really like to do a little bit of, 
um, pumpkin. Now, what? I hope my blend doesn't mess up on me. I sometimes, when I struggle to get these out, yeah, it'll come apart. And my pumpkin pie is notorious for that. So I might give it up if I can't get it to work on here. Ooh. Always hate it when something like that happens, right when you're filming. Maybe I'll try the other end. Let's see if that works. There we go. Let's try this. All I do with the orange, because you think of nacho cheese, right? Is right where the dots are, I just kind of go over the dots with the orange. It's pumpkin. It is pumpkin pie not orange and then using any kind of yellow this happens to be the dark daffodil then i come in and i fill in the rest and then in a minute i'm going to actually blend them which is why it's called blends and then you'll see that the orange kind of mingles in and to me that makes them look more like nacho chips okay so now you can Go ahead and put that inside. And you should get a nice frame of the purple on all the way around the freesia. Shame on me. Okay. So now all we have left to do is to decorate the front. And because it's a pinata, I like the idea of doing the string. So I really just measured this from here to here. And that is like two and three quarter inches. You could go a little more, a little less and trim it after the fact. But what I like to do to begin with is take, you know what, we have these little smaller mini dimensionals, which I really kind of like. I don't kind of, I really like them. So I am going to put that right at the top of my diamond. And I'm gonna put, you know what, I did that wrong. See what happens when you're doing a video? All right. <laughs> It's because I'm trying to hurry before my son gets here. <laughs> All right. What I really wanted to do was clamp that in with the dimensional. So first I want to put my baker's twine there, and then I'm going to put the dimensional right over it. Does that make sense? Now that's, I accidentally took that plastic off. So I'm going to go ahead with that step now because it doesn't matter when we do it. But I'm taking my so saffron. And this is where I'm gonna put holy guacamole. It's your birthday. Oops. So I'm gonna, ah! when everything starts to go wrong, right at the end of a video. Okay. All right, so holy guacamole, I'm centering it. This is the one that's two inches by three quarter inches. And then I'm going to also put one on either side. I like these little ones for this. It makes this stick out, but it kind of secures it more. And I think they're, no, I got to pull these up. Okay, so I'm going to center this on there. There we go. And see, when you do this, that then kind of sticks out, but when it's folded flat, it stays flat. All right, so that's taken care of. And now I want my string to stay on here and I'm gonna use a glue dot for that. In fact, I'm gonna use more than one glue dot for that. I'm gonna put a glue dot here, pull my string down, and then I'm gonna put another glue dot right over that one. Again, the idea to be to clamp it inside adhesive. There we go. And then because I will be putting my pinata on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue dots 
on either side. I could even, look at me, I'm gonna go one more because I know how big this is. There we go. All right, now I stamped, I was gonna stamp them to show you, but I think I'm gonna just to save time, show you that I stamped and colored and fussy cut the pinata, the bowl of guacamole with the face, with his mouth wide open, because it's like, holy guacamole, and that seemed appropriate. I am gonna glue these nachos onto the bowl, and then finally I have a little hot pepper that I'm gonna put up here. But I just wanted you to know I stamped all of these just on some scrap basic white, colored them in with blends, and now I am going to adhere them. So here we go. We just center him on there like that. See, and then again, just so you can see how this pops out. Isn't that so cute? I love it. All right, and then I'm going to put my little red pepper up on my holy guacamole sign. I mean, you got to love what they say too, right? This is not a card just for kids. I'm going to have fun sharing this card with other people as well. And then I'm going to put just a dot of glue at the bottom of these nachos. And then put my little guacamole on there. I want to show as much of the nachos as I can. And then I think I'm going to put these up on dimensionals. Because I love, obviously I love dimension. That's why I'm doing a pop-out card. Because that gives dimension. I hope you guys are liking this new fold. And that you're not intimidated by it. Because it really is not difficult. Okay. Now I may do this. I have those, uh, what are they called? Pastel adhesive back sequins. I don't think I have them right up here, but I'm thinking they might look pretty on this too. But there's the finished card. Now you'll see this is sticking out on the other side. So we had this discussion last night. I made this card with my team last night and they favored folding this in half and then putting those dimensionals on either side. And so maybe I'm with them on that. Here's one I did earlier where I had, I have a dimensional all the way across this and I folded it in half. But see, when you see this and you see the three of these, aren't they so much cuter when you do two tones? So now I have this and this left and I can make a whole nother card. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun to make. Thank you again, Renee. Bye.